Hey guys, so I uh, got a lot of requests to do the Draw My Life tag, and uh, I thought, great, but it wasn't until I actually started doing it that I realized how labor-intensive and emotionally draining it could be, but to start my story off, I was born in Virginia in a town called Norfolk. Um, I was a cutesy, cutesy little baby. I was actually premature. I was only about four pounds when I was born. Um, but I was born to an amazing, incredible, talented, intelligent, gorgeous woman. And uh, my mom was in the military. She was a sergeant. Um, when I was little, I remember just having to get up really early uh, because my mother worked. Um, it wasn't until I got older and had my own kids that I realized the sacrifice that she had to make. Um, every single day I was dropped off at a daycare or a babysitter's. Uh, just remember just getting up at like six o'clock, five o'clock in the morning just to be ready. Um, but my childhood was pretty awesome. I can look back and say, you know, unfortunately there are some things that happen to us that, uh, you know, we can't change. But despite that, I had a lot of friends. Um, there were people around me that loved me. I remember climbing up trees, uh, playing tag and just saving caterpillars and we were like the animal rescuers of the neighborhood. I got really fond memories of my childhood and growing up with uh, my friends. I remember um, just going to church, like Christianity was just who you were. It's like you were either a Montague or a Capulet. You had no control over it. You just were born and you were a Christian, that's it. So my aunt would take me to the church and uh, I would listen to all the wonderful music and and all that and uh, the older I got the more um, people started realizing I was a little different I talked a little different um, I was chubby uh, I was a little bit more introverted but um, the one thing that I really did excel at despite the, the, the illustrations in this video is art I love to read I love to uh, act and uh, I just loved art but um, I was pretty intelligent when I was a kid precocious if you may, um, I remember uh, getting in trouble a lot because I would finish my work early and I would just talk. I just felt like I was above the law. I remember I had this uh, awesome pair of leggings that my mom bought me and I begged and I pleaded. I said, mom, please, please, please let me wear these leggings to school. And she, for some reason, she just did not want me to wear them to school that day. And I was like, you know what? That's cool. So I put them in my book bag and I, as soon as I got to school, I changed into them and everybody was like, oh my gosh, girl, those leggings, you look so good. And I was like, I know, I know I look good in these leggings. And I was stunting, okay? I was stunting all three feet of me. Anyway, I looked at the clock and it was almost time for uh, me to catch the bus home. And I was like, oh man, I gotta get out of these my leggings before my mom kicked my butt. So uh, I was like, um, Miss Finch, can I please be excused and go to the restroom? And my teacher, I swear she hated me. I swear she hated me. I don't know why, she just did not like me. And uh, I think she even smiled when she told me no. And it's like she knew, it's like she knew I was gonna get killed by my mom if she didn't let me go to the bathroom. So. I, my devious little mind concocted a plan and I said, well, Miss Finch, if you won't let me use the restroom, I guess I'll have to use it right here. And I did. I beat on myself. Listen, if I didn't change out of these leggings, my mom was going to kill me. Okay. Plus, I hated Miss Finch anyway. So that was my revenge. Um, yeah, moving on. <laughs> um, my mom uh, was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And um, I have very few memories of her walking when I was little. Um, the older I got, uh, the more her ability to walk was, um, it just decreased and she went from walking with a limp to walking with a cane to actually being in a wheelchair. Uh, my mom needed help for everything. I uh, would help her get dressed, I would help her bathe, um, I would cook meals and I would clean. I just basically did everything and it was my normal. I didn't, we didn't have anybody else. I mean, dad wasn't around. We didn't really uh, tell people that we needed a lot of help. Um, I, I never really was allowed to have friends over the house. Um, you know, I, I just learned to not ask for help uh, from my mom. My mom was a very prideful woman and I 
I learned I learned a lot from her and those that was one of the hardest things to unlearn is uh, how to ask for help so we moved from Virginia to Pennsylvania because of my mom's job and it was just I hated it I I had no friends um, I was just an outcast uh, nobody got me um, I was just you know just different um, I was doing um, the grocery shopping and keeping the house clean and I mean that that was that was tough for me I was about 10 11 and I just I just saw my mom just needed so much more help that, that I could provide and you know we were far away from family and uh, it just one of those things happened where we got a call from one of our family members and that just made every everything different uh, they found out that we needed a lot of help and uh, my mom was really sick so sick in fact that she had to be admitted to a hospital and my aunt and my uncle took me in and enrolled me into high school and uh, you know everything was going great I was back in Norfolk my grades were doing great I had friends um, I discovered drama my love for theater and acting and art and uh, just one day um, I looked up and I uh, got a phone call from the hospital and they said that uh, my mom had a aortic aneurysm in the middle of the night and that she was gone. And uh, I, I, I just felt like somebody had sucked all the air out of me. It had always been my mom and me ever since I was little. Um, after I graduated high school, um, I went to college, I bought a car. I, I just I just did I didn't know what I was doing I was just alone I was confused um, I, I didn't know how to ask for help uh, when I got to college nobody cared about what, what we were really going through everybody just wanted to party and that was my escape I never really grieved I never really dealt with losing my mom I never really dealt with uh, you know having to go through so much at a young age and I kind of just turned to partying and that kind of became my uh, priority and the more I hung out with people who just didn't care about me you know the more sad I felt I remember checking my phone messages and seeing that nobody called me and I know that a lot of people don't know this uh, part um, how deep in depression I got I was was in a bad relationship with somebody who was just treating me terribly um, and uh, I, I had pushed my family and I pushed my friends away to the point where I really was alone and um, I just I was just so sad uh, I was so sad and I didn't know how to ask for help I was done I was just ready to to leave um, I did something stupid and I wound up in the hospital and uh, I'll never forget that day and uh, this beautiful this beautiful nurse um, whom I didn't know came right up to me and she said Michelle you're not supposed to be here when I first got my car um, right after high school it was my independence and uh, I got into a car accident and I wound up losing my car and with it I lost my independence I lost my so-called freedom of crappy friends I was hanging out with and I just felt stuck I hated it and I, I didn't realize at the time that that was the turning point that that was God's way of getting me out of a situation that I couldn't get out of myself you know I started to spend more time with my family. I started to learn how to love myself again, have respect for myself again. And I met this guy and looking back now, I see that, you know, his heart was just as broken as mine was, but you know, God had just yoked us together and just set us on this journey where we didn't have to walk alone anymore we could we could do it together and we could carry each other and help each other through and all the lies that I had believed before that were taking me to an early grave were lies I am worth something my, I'm important my life matters I'm not alone my family loves me I had to learn how to love myself I you know I can't be uh, this person 
who has all this pride and be on this island alone and never cry out for help. You know, help does asking for help doesn't mean that you're weak. I'm stronger for realizing that I need help. And, you know, I just been this insecure person and I couldn't understand why, why, you know, would this God love me? Who am I? I learned how to love myself through how people treat me. It's transactional love. I couldn't understand what this unconditional love was, you know, and it's not like I have the answers. I don't know. I don't know how I changed. All I know is I have proof because I'm not who I was. I'm different. I am happy. Um, and I know that I'm loved. And if you knew me back then and you know who I am now, you would know that something changed and it wasn't from pure will. It wasn't something I did. It was inside out. It was like the whole time I was crying out, I was, I was already being comforted and I didn't even realize it, you know, and I'm not perfect. I can't boast about anything. Every single thing I have in my entire life was given to me. You know, my marriage, my children, my talents, they're all gifts from God above. I know that I shouldn't be here, but I am by the grace of God and his mercy on my life. And I know that he'll never give up on me so I can't give up on me. So that's my story. Thanks guys for watching. I mean, I started out just this lonely, grubby little worm crawling on the dirt and you know, God is changing me and bringing me from glory to glory. And uh, I think it's awesome to be able to share that with you guys. So uh, thanks, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.